Hey guys, sorry about the crazy lighting and uh, I'm back in my car again. I've lost my, um, I look better, hi, <laughs> I've lost my, um, I'm trying to like figure out the shade up or down, it's better, oh I look washed out, um, I've lost my tripod, um, little adapter that holds my phone and so I can't do this sitting in my comfy chair in my house and so I have to do this out in my truck and, uh, now here in uh Maryland which I think is like 7:30 7:45 I don't even know what time it is um so I need to do it while we still have daylight out because I'm not going to hold my arm up in the air in the house this little nifty steering wheel acts as a great little tripod so um I wanted to do this talk tonight um a lot for my members um hey Colleen welcome uh, a lot for my members who are in the middle of our Breakthrough Challenge, but also for all of our friends and new group members in Breakthrough 39. And that's why I'm doing it over here in the Breakthrough um, group. Because um, I feel like this is kind of a, a a topic that just will help hit home for a lot of people at home who haven't started the process of being healthier or, or, or so I, sort of living a sort of boring, um, uninspiring um, way with, with finding better health and are looking for more excitement, looking for, for, uh, more success. So it's going to be really valuable for my clients in the middle of the breakthrough challenge that we're in. Um, because for you guys, I know what happens in these challenges. I've run many of them, 90 day challenges, 30 day challenges, all sorts of things. And what always happens, we're like right about halfway through and what always happens in these challenges is that people start to have awesome success in the first week or two, and then there's sort of the, you know, the little setbacks or the success starts to run. I would love to show a picture of our um, success mirror at work, and Colleen, your your weight loss is up there, so if you have more to add, I'd love to hear it. Um, but our mirror is growing fuller and fuller with pounds lost, inches lost, and other celebrations and successes. But what I know happens for so many people in these challenges is that they get rolling and then there's this little piece of you that just gets comfortable and complacent with, oh, I've lost five pounds and I've made, you know, X, Y, and Z changes and, well, it's good enough. You know, there, I don't think in your mind you say to yourself, oh, it's good enough. But I think for a lot of us, we set this big goal and we get headed towards it and then there's this little complacent mediocre piece of us that's like oh i'm cruising i've made some good changes ho hum and we just sort of go back to this like dull hum life of going through the motions and the problem with that there's nothing inherently wrong with losing five pounds and making some nice changes but nobody is going to get excited and passionate at, about that. You're going to excited, get excited and passionate about living an exceptional change, a huge change, a, a monumental change in your health, and then holding that change for as long as possible. So that's really what I want to do today is sort of break up any, any sort of blind acceptance of your own mediocrity or your own status quo. And when I say the word status quo, I mean your little comfortable, boring place inside where life's fine and you're not rocking the boat. Um, <clears throat> but the problem with that little comfortable place is that um, big time results don't happen there and you're not inspired there and it's just not and generally not genuinely not that enjoyable. Um, so let's talk about what I really want to talk about today, which is how to live ex with ex how to create exceptional health in your life, because that really is the antithesis to mediocrity. That's really what's going to blast your little comfort zone to pieces and hopefully shatter that bar and raise the bar of your health like tenfold in your life. OK, one thing I'm going to ask of anybody on this talk, I did put it out there to my other um Hey, new uh, Anna, you're a new name I don't know very well, so welcome to the talk. Um, if you see somebody request to join Breakthrough while I'm doing this talk, could you just approve them? I think any of you have the ability to do that, and I just want to um, 
I put it out there on my other Facebook page, and if people want to join and catch the talk, I just want that to happen, and I can't see that while I'm doing the talk. Um, <clears throat> so, those of you who um, are just jumping on now, I just basically prepped the talk by saying that um, on our path to exceptional health, we all have this little piece of us that sort of accepts our own status quo mediocrity, our own... Um, comfort level of like good enough and most of us aren't really excited or inspired by good enough um so tonight what i really want to help you guys do is shatter that mediocrity shatter that status quo place in you that's just comfortable with ho oh, hum this is good enough i'm doing my thing wowzers what is that <laughs> i've never seen that before there's a big old like button that just like flew across my screen it was mesmerizing um <laughs> so we've got some more people hopping on so this will be good good times to talk and um if any of you are in stuck places right now or or feel um what i'm talking about it'd be awesome to hear from you just a thumbs up uh, a like or or a comment or a question as they come up during the talk i love these they're more fun frankly when they're when they're interactive talks um, so the word exceptional basically is defined as unusual, not typical, or unusually good and outstanding. And I think we can all agree that if you <clears throat> created a path to exceptional health and it was unusually good and outstanding, you'd be a hell of a lot more excited to continue down that path if you started reaping the rewards of feeling like what you were a part of and the, and the actions you were taking were truly leading you to a level of exceptional, outstanding, I mean, just deep fulfillment by what you're doing. Um, so it's not just going through the motions and I'm eating different and I'm, yeah, I'm working out. It's like absolutely amazing core changes to your life that lead you to feeling exceptional. Okay. So that's really my hope for each of you is that when you leave today, you set a goal, you set a intention out there that that's really how you're going to choose to treat your health this year because that this is the time, right? Um, most of society around us is not necessarily supporting us to live exceptional. I don't mean to be pessimistic. There's certainly a lot of beauty and inspiration out there. But I would say if you look at society as a whole, sort of news and friends and stuff on Facebook, a lot of it is riddled with fear, anxiety, worry. I mean, there's more shit to get pissed off, um, offended about on Facebook and the news than I, you can even add up. I mean, this gorilla story is just crazy to me um i almost like the the funny repercussion memes that are coming out more than the actual story because it's sad um but just it sort of represents what you see out of society which is just this like fury to like judge and be insulted and be offended and da 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 and, and uh oh it's the mother's fault and the kid's fault and we shouldn't have animals cage and all this stuff like, society's pushing us to just sort of stay offended, stay boring, ho-hum, status quo, and not live exceptional. I mean, frankly, when we get wrapped up in all these little things, and if you're passionate about that, don't. This isn't about the gorilla and the boy who fell in the cage. Um, um, but the piece is that society at large, for the most part, is not trying to be exceptional. I mean, mo most people, unfortunately, are being entertained and a lot of that's through drama and fear and worry and um ugh, pop ups. Um you know, things that just don't really support that kind of change in you. So um that's why I'm a really big big fan of follow people who inspire you. And if I'm one of those people, awesome, that psychs that's that's what I hope to be. I definitely have my people out here on the Facebook world and uh, coaches I work with and books I read and stuff that just help me cultivate that level of exceptional. And if there's any that you follow, I'd love to hear that. I mean, for me, um, the writings of Wayne Dyer, beautiful man who died in the last year, like, holy cow, when I read his stuff, if I ever feel flat, um, uninspired, unexceptional, status quo, I read like a few pages of his stuff and it just brings me back to this place of like 
really living this life intentionally and trying to make something great out of it. So if there's anybody like that for you that you follow, could be um, a public figure on Facebook, could be somebody you read, somebody you've seen speak live, I'd love to hear that because that's all good fodder for you bringing out more um, passion, more intensity, more more passion towards your health and towards other aspects of your life. So that'd be great to hear. So society is sort of creating this din, this backdrop of low-grade energy is what I call it all. That You know, um, drama, fear, obsession, worry, judgment, all that stuff. Um, you, I hope, if you're following me, if you're listening to this talk, really want a hell of a lot more than that. You, you want something a lot more fun and inspiring and excited. So the first piece is to start with a core story, to start with creating an exceptional core story. And you could, I mean, it's not that dissimilar from when I say, hey, let's come up with your goal. I just think goal is kind of a boring word. Um, I want you to really think about what, what like exceptional core story about your health could you create? So for me, I'm just using me as, as an example, not to talk about me, but I just know my own stuff. And my hope is that as I share, some of you are also willing to share too, because that creates great conversation. But for me, I know my health was not awesome between about 25 to 30. Um, after I finished hiking the Appalachian Trail, I was on, I then got into a master's program. <clears throat> I got pretty unhealthy. I worked my ass off. I worked 35 hours a week at a grocery store. I went to my master's program during the day. I ate what I thought was healthy, but what I was eating was just an inordinate amount of food. And a lot of it wasn't very nourishing. It wasn't good for me. And I wasn't working out because I didn't think I had time. And I, towards the end of acupuncture school, I was exceedingly depressed, like suicidally depressed. If anybody who's heard my story before, I'm very candid about the fact that I was very dark. I was in a very dark, ugly place in my late 20s. Um, really like drive down the street, think about driving into the pylons and the bridge, like, um, <clears throat> not living a very exceptional or healthy life at that point. And I have been guided, directed through my own inner voice, um, to becoming more and more passionate about health to the point now where I lead hundreds and hopefully thousands of people to live healthier lives. Um, my exceptional stories are about to turn 40 and I, honestly want to be healthier emotionally, physically, and stronger than I was in my late 20s in that very unhealthy time for me. I can tell you I'm leaner. I'm significantly stronger. I'm, um, I am a heck of a lot more emotionally healthy for one. I mean, I have a beautiful wife and family, um, who I just feel whole. I feel very grateful with my life. I have a business. I feel very fortunate about the fact that I, run a business that is a deep passion for me. And I know not everybody's work is, but I hope for all of you, in terms of creating an exceptional life and exceptional health, I hope that you're able to find... Um, <clears throat> oh, my wife jo- just joined. You missed my compliments, babe. I just complimented you. Um, my hand is, like, really uncomfortable, smashed into the steering wheel here. I gotta get a new... Ti- oh, hi, Karen. I gotta get a new tripod real soon. So, Porsche, I wanna read your comment. Instead of a goal challenge yourself. Most competitive people can relate. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's why I run challenges Porsche is just because people like, people like being challenged. And I do find that word goal a little dry and boring, which is why I'm really trying to create a little, um, oh, look at that. She tuned in time just to hear that my, her, my wife comment. Um, so, um, where was I going? So I just told a little bit about my story and just that my goal really, and not from an egocentric place. I don't want to like look hotter at 40 and be in a GQ magazine. Um, I just want to be a healthier person at 40 in two months than I was in my late twenties. And I know I've shattered that. I know I've, I've absolutely met that. I have a strong, healthy family. I have a business that I absolutely love. I have clients and people who follow me who I'm just deeply passionate about serving And then I have consistent fitness in my life and nutrition principles that are like really seamless and effortless for me right now. So my hope for you is that you live the same awesome 
exceptional core story for yourself. I really want you to aim high um, and not pick something that's just ho-hum. And this is where I just think that setting goals like losing 10, 15 pounds can be a little ho-hum. I have no problem if your core story has some aspect of physical change like a weight loss goal because look, I what I help people do for a living is lose weight and it's great. It helps people with more confidence. If you are heavy and you have 30 or 50 or more pounds, it's unhealthy. Um, that's awesome, but I don't think it's enough of a core story to really create an exceptional life, exceptional health and deep passion in you that's going to help you carry that through for years to come. I, I don't care about 30 days. I mean, we've talked about this. I can put you on a damn juice fast, restrictive diet, and have you lose a ton of weight and feel great for a handful of weeks, and you'll say your energy is great and this and that. But, like, that's not a core story, and that's not deep change, because that is not lastable and sustainable, okay? Um, one more piece and this I talked about um, to my members in our last talk in Club 39, my other Facebook group. Um, <clears throat> we talked about sort of the um, emotional side of health. And I talked about circumstances versus, um, in this case, your circumstances versus building an exceptional life. Now, circumstances is basically what's showing up in your life. A commitment to living an exceptional life is basically your attitude towards those things that show up. Commonplace thing for many people, and this is why if you've fallen off the wagon of your goals, um, or, ugh, my brain goes blank every once in a while. <clears throat> this is why people get thrown around emotionally so much and they don't really um, create exceptional change is the circumstances of their life throw them some curveballs. And so if you've had any curveballs recently, I'd love to hear what they are. Because I know um, many people in my challenges and many people in life, this is what happens. You start changing your nutrition. Who can identify with this? You start exercising. Um, you start seeing some strength. You, you make some changes to your nutrition. Um, you set some goals. You feel really good about it. And then three weeks later, um, your kid gets sick and you, um, you fall off your nutrition for a couple days and then maybe you have a long weekend and maybe you had a party and all of a sudden you're like, the circumstances of your life are saying, oh, you're failing. You're not doing this. Um, great. It's reason. <laughs> uh, and so that is like the tipping point. Like when circumstances start coming at you and then this is where you decide, and am I going to go flat? And just decide, um, oh well, hold on, I can't do it. See, I told my, I told you I couldn't do it. Or you're gonna go. Um, <laughs> a commitment towards exceptional is like your attitude towards that thing, and that's so important. And Gina, you said that's you, and I the, absolutely. When you said to me the other day something about like, um, shoot, what did you say in class? Um, it's all about getting back on the horse every morning, even after a crappy... Yeah, oh, don't have too many crappy Chick-fil-A nights there, Joylin. But yes, absolutely. Um, it is all about getting back on there. And I think you will get back on there time and time again when your core story is wrapped around exceptional health and not just boring, ho-hum status quo. I, I, it really needs to be... Your core story about health needs to be bigger, more enticing... Um, than maybe it has been before, okay? And that's what I really think keeps people on the straight and narrow through. Because circumstances, I mean, let me just guarantee you this right now, folks. Between here and the next three months or the next year, you are going, yeah, then you go backwards. You're going to have circumstances, I guarantee you that. And in, in my opinion, you should look at those and say, thank you so much for the challenge, I'm up for this. Like, that's, that's Gina, what I would say. I mean, I would get a little pig-headed, like, discipline there, a little pig-headed, like, um, whatever circumstances, like, I'm choosing this exceptional life, I'm choosing this exceptional path, like, you get a choice to say whatever the heck you want to say about your setbacks, um, that's your power, you don't have power over circumstances happening, because a lot of stuff happens to you or around you, but you absolutely get a choice in saying how you're going to deal with them, I mean, how do you see somebody who deals with god-awful things like 
getting cancer and they keep this beautiful attitude and then to see other people defeated by the simplest of things. Well, folks, the only difference was the person, one person had an exceptional core story and the other person had a defeated, poor me, life happens to me, my circumstances dictate my happiness, right? That's the big difference between those two people. And I'm saying, let's work on creating an exceptional core story and then a commitment to that and then enough accountability and support so that you don't jump off when you get hit. I really, truly think if you've had a setback or you've gotten hit in the last couple of weeks, that's awesome because that is a huge opportunity for the world basically saying, you serious about this or are you going to get bored again? Are you serious about making this change or are you just going to say, oh, poor me, I tried new field one more time? Like... It's a great opportunity if you see it that way, okay? Um, and the, the poor me can't be stronger than the story. I mean, really, really that's a big piece. So I just want to know, like, each of you, I'd love to hear, how are you going to choose your attitude towards the health? How, how could you turn your current goals, your current hopes, your current, or even if you haven't really started the process, how could you turn your current wishes into and a, a stronger, more powerful core story. Or if you have one that drives you, like I said to you, mine was coming out of my late 20s um, with all these tools to help people. Like I was an acupuncturist and I was interested in fitness and all this stuff. Um, and then getting into this business of wellness and then finding a core story for me that just really excited me. Like, I'd love to hear, and if you miss me telling that, you just gotta watch it back um, when it's done. You can watch the whole thing. Um, So anyway, this is always the part where I want people to, like, step up and share their stuff, and everybody's all timid, and I don't want to share. You know, so you can tell us what circumstances you're up against now, or you can tell us what um, changes are coming into your mind from what I'm saying tonight. Or, um, or if you really have a kick-ass core story, or story that really leads you towards excellence, share that with us, okay? This is a great time for any questions. I want to live the latter part of my life better than the first half. Absolutely, Teresa, absolutely. Ha ha, what? Doing that? Um, that's great, Teresa. I mean, I, good for you, and, and go, go do that. That's awesome. I mean, that's, um... I see a lot of people say that to me in their 50s and 60s. It'll it'll manifest as, um, uh, you know, I spent so much of the last few decades taking care of everybody else and being exhausted and tired and run, work and making money. And now I want to be, like, healthier to have this awesome second half of my life. I've heard people say, I watched my parents struggle and suffer so much because they didn't take care of them health, their health. <clears throat> and I am motivated by being exceptional and going far beyond that. I see so many people hitting their late 60s, 70s, like, like, sweet, I'm alive, what, what do I get to do? And I got clients who travel who do awesome, awesome travel. I have a couple right now, um, Peggy and Richard, out there traveling across the country, up the country, up the West Coast, and then back across again, like, for six weeks, seeing all these people, like, that is freaking awesome. I want to, that's a great core story, like, they're living out an exceptional life by creating better health, um, so Porsche's saying, for me, it wasn't bad eating, I was working 60 to 70 hours a week and wasn't exercising, but I feel better when I get out there, so I just came for eight and a half mile bike ride now, and working again, by the way, see more, Definitely see more. great sharing, Porsche, thanks so much, yeah, working 60 to 70 hours a week, I and mean, there's no question that is just taxing on you, physically and emotionally, and so it sounds like you were eating well, but you weren't getting movement, so awesome, if you're starting to shift, and you're getting inspired to get out there and move, that, that's wonderful, I mean, that's really what I hope for everybody, it's just, um, that you get moving, and you get doing some significant, um, level of fitness in your life every week, so, and Abby, my wife, is saying she wants to teach our kids, um, from the start, what it means to live and be healthy, and that's, that's a huge one for, I mean, for us too, as, as a couple, just, um, I don't think I'm telling a secret if I say the state of kids' health right now is god awful, I mean, it's, it's, it's embarrassing, and we as the adults should feel a certain level of, 
of guilt of like, what the hell are we doing, quite honestly. And I don't feel disempowered by that conversation. I feel empowered to like, for me, my passion is um, more adults than my wife's. She, she's very passionate about children. And so is Elizabeth who just joined us. Who's a phys ed teacher. Um, but I feel like by helping more adults live strong, healthy lives and like really aware of themselves and becoming better practitioners themselves and not leaning on a sick and broken medical system to fix them, patch them up and give them pills to get better. I'm teaching adults about what real eating looks like, what real fitness looks like, and hopefully we're going to start raising better, healthier kids because, my God, the children's generation, like, huge motivation for people. Um, Cindy, so Cindy said, I feel better when I work out this week between the hot... This week between the holiday and school events, I have bad attitude. My husband's asking, what's your issue? And I finally said, I didn't get me time. I know I didn't see you in a workout, and I was bummed. I didn't see you on Tuesday night, and Monday was a holiday. So, um, I know. I hope to see you again, Cindy. Come on back and work out. Come on over and work out. We got kettlebells in the house. Teresa, I've had both hips replaced. Wow. And have another upcoming surgery, but I'm looking forward to this surgery to go into the surgery as I did the previous one strong and then recover strong a bit. Yeah, it's great story. See more. Um, that's, that's a great story, Teresa. I mean, you're, you're obviously a champ for dealing with, I mean, look, talk about something, a setback. I mean, a lot of people, <clears throat> if they had anything even close to two hips replaced are bellying up, telling everybody their sob story about how their body beat them up and now they have to just become sick and unhealthy. Um, that is a core story a lot of people use and you are living an exceptional story if you're not letting that defeat you. More power to you. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think Portia, you know, you're agreeing with Cindy. It's about me time. I, I'm not a mom, but I play one on TV. No, but I, um, I, tra I train an awful lot of moms, and it's just such a, such a core story to moms of like, oh, I feel selfish when I take care of me and this and that, and yet, and yet the ones who really do start investing in their health, that is not what they say at all. They all say, I'm a better mom, I'm a more patient mom, I feel more open with my partner, I feel more passionate at work, I feel like I bring more strength to work, so like, awesome and awesome and awesome and awesome, like, I never hear women invest in their health and go, oh man, I really am not being a good wife. Like, it just doesn't happen. I mean, the women I know who really have have changed their approach towards their health and are investing in themselves through fitness and nutrition, they <coughs> are reaping exceptional health. They're reaping exceptional stories. So it's awesome. And uh, it's fun to watch that. I mean, it's really fun to watch people take over. Somebody who joined this group, um, I think she's still here with us. Exactly. Um, Chris, uh, I love Chris's story because she is a, a mom who, um, you know, came to us wanting to lose weight. And I think what she really found is that now she's a freaking kick-ass entrepreneur. Like, um, she came in wanting to lose weight, which I said is a great goal, but her, her exception, she, if you want to hear an exceptional story, you should hear, she should hear her talk because it's just phenomenal watching how, she started losing weight, and she started getting stronger, and she might even say she didn't even lose as much weight as she wanted to. Um, you know what? I have a blog about her that you could find on uh, 39minuteworkout.com, although it's being literally replaced today. Um, my new website will be up today. Or you can go to onlinekettlebells.com, and you could also look for it there. <clears throat> um, she really found this passion for photography. She had a business she had started, um, but I don't think she was really treating it like a business. She was treating it like a hobby. And as she started creating exceptional health and just really week on week in, week out, getting stronger physically, losing some weight, holding herself differently, prioritizing her health differently, all of a sudden, all this passion of about her health, she just threw into her work. And now she's creating a viable, strong, healthy photography business. And she's just like in such an awesome place. And it's inspiring to watch that. Um, that folks, that's exceptional. Like when you can take a health goal that can sound ho-hum, like I want to lose 15 pounds and you can turn it into, 
I want to be the best mom possible and and bring my most passion to my work and really do what I'm here to do in this world, fuck yeah, like that is exceptional. So that's what I'm talking about. Um, so just great conversation. Thanks so much. Lots of sharing, lots of comments. And um, clearly some people were, were moved in this talk today. So I'm really psyched to have you guys. Hey, Chris, you're welcome. I just love your story. I mean, you, you excite me. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm very excited by how much um, strength you've taken on through this whole process. And it's really neat because uh, I've found the same thing in my 30s of getting physically and emotionally healthier. Not only am I not suicidal and I'm not heavy and I'm not um, unhealthy, but I'm thriving, thriving in so many areas of my life. And I'm so grateful in so many life. And I know, Chris, like you really really have done the same. You're really taking that same path. So I'm super inspired by that. Um, more so than just the weight loss, frankly, more so than just that. <clears throat> like the whole big picture is freaking awesome. So if there's any more comments or questions, I will hang out for another couple of minutes. If there's more conversation to be had or more, um, comments, bring it on. Let's keep, let's keep talking. But it's funny how just like tweaking things a little bit, like, <laughs> you could say that this talk isn't that different than than a talk I've done on like goals and action steps, but there really is something a little bit flat and boring to the word goals. Um, but the idea of creating an exceptional core story around your health, um, especially when it's one that might encompass a bigger time range, like a decade, like the coming decade for you, that's like that's awesome big time work. And maybe that's what really what people should do um, following this post is like in the next 24 hours or whenever you watch this, maybe later down the road, you get on here and you stake a claim and say, what is with some crystal clarity going to be your core story for this coming decade? So maybe that's really it. As I'm doing this talk, I'm thinking, I don't think that the length of the challenge I'm running for members is big enough. And those of you who aren't clients, you don't even know what the challenge is. But I think the work we're talking about here is much more about long-term, decade-long core story changes. Um, because exceptional health, I mean, that should be like a big picture stuff in your life. So <clears throat> um, I always get to this point in the talk where like 32 minutes in and my throat is just starting to like go where I can't talk much more. Um Thanks so much for being an awesome group. If there is if there are any more questions in the next 30 second or minute, I will stay engaged. Um, but at this point, my throat is sufficiently thrashed and my hand holding the phone is sufficiently uh, smashed. But uh, probably the most fun live talk I've done yet. So I'm excited. Thank you so much, Chris. Awesome. Um, and anybody else who's been here for the duration of it or even parts of it, like great talk and thanks for all the interaction and uh um check out the new website in the next day or so um for people living in the maryland area it's 39 minuteworkout.com i think tonight it goes live if you look at it right now it may not be live but um i'm having a friend uh not a friend she's my virtual assistant redesigned both my websites and i just think they're beautiful it's a whole um new like rebranding of the look and i'm really psyched about it so all right, guys. Thank you all. You, you all have been a great um, audience. So um, we'll see you next time. Um, keep posting on the group. Keep staying engaged. And uh, and I'll keep running. So can I stop in it? Absolutely. Teresa, my wife, is there um, tomorrow in the studio from 6 a.m. till about uh, 10.30. Um, from 6 a.m. till 10.30. Um, we have class at 9.30. You can certainly come in and watch that. And then uh, the next time I will be at work, I have the little ones tomorrow. I have my, my young daughter who turns four on this weekend. Um, I take her to gymnastics on Friday, and then we go get crepes. And I don't eat the crepes, even though they look really yummy with Nutella and banana in it and all that. I don't eat that. Um, so I will be at work most of the day on Monday if you want to come by. We're usually there morning and evening when class is in session in the middle of the day. Less so. Um... All right. Thanks so much, everybody. I will check you next time. If you have any comments after this video has played, as always, I pay attention. Um, 
I will uh, I'll see comments and I'll field any questions that come up down the road. Thanks so much. We'll catch you next time.